I'm Lawson, and I'm here with Bo. And we're here to take a closer look at the X-Series OBD2 Wideband Air Fuel Controller Gauge. If you tune with open source or piggyback software, your days of having to add slow responding air fuel ratio to your logs through a cumbersome serial to USB connection are over. The X-Series OBD2 Wideband connects to your vehicle's OBD2 port. This allows you to connect your open source or your piggyback programmer to the pass-through connector that's provided with the gauge and stream that air fuel ratio data right into your program for data logging. Those days of having to deal with voltage offset tables, they're over. You just plug it in, wire it up, and it's gonna be ready to go. It's easy to use. It's got a super fast sampling rate of 100 samples a second through the can, which is about 10 times faster than your serial to USB. And it's gonna allow you to see AFR data that you would otherwise miss with a slower responding wideband. Stuff that's gonna give you the safest, most reliable tune. One of the best things about it is if you got a V8 like this Camaro back here, you can piggyback two gauges together so that you can get AFR on both banks. We're gonna show you how to do that, how easy it is to use right now. Here's what's in the box with the X-Series OBD2 gauge. Got the sensor here and the sensor bung. This is gonna get installed in the exhaust system. This is the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. Once that's installed in the exhaust, you're gonna plug in the sensor harness into the sensor here. This gets plugged into the back of the gauge itself. Once the sensor is plugged in, you're gonna go ahead and take your uh, power and ground leads here. Red goes to power. It should be an ignition source. So it's key on with ignition. It should not be accessory or a cigarette lighter source. And you wanna make sure it's fused. So a good place would be in the fuse panel. And this is gonna get grounded, a black wire, to the chassis. Uh, you can use a ring terminal, something like that. Once that's wired up, you're gonna plug this connector here into the back of the gauge as well. And then your OBD2 pass-through connector gets plugged in. This end gets plugged into the vehicle's factory OBD2 port. And then you can plug in any other interface, like an HP Tuner's interface, into the other side, into the bottom. We've got the Y-band hooked up to power and ground. We've got the sensor installed in the exhaust system. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the OBD2 port. Here's our OBD2 pass-through connector from the Y-band gauge. We're gonna go ahead and plug that into the factory OBD2 port on the car, underneath the dash. Next, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the OBD2 connector from the HP Tuner's interface. HP Tuner's interface shows power. Now all we need to do is hook this up to our laptop. For specific instructions on setting this up, click the link. If you've got a V8 like this Camaro here, you may want to monitor both banks at the same time. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, because we use an OBD2 pass-through connector, you can actually link two of those connectors together. So all we need to do is unplug the HP Tuner's interface here. We've already got our first connector from the first Y-band. Uh, we've got our second Y-band connector here. We've done a bit of a temporary install, uh, but we're going to go ahead and plug this in to the OBD2 port and then plug the HP Tuner's interface into that connector below it. Next, we're gonna show you how to set up the second gauge for data logging within HP Tuners. In order to do that, we're gonna click on the mode button here until we get to the OBD2 option. Once we go there, we're gonna hit select. And it's gonna say ECU, we're gonna hit select again, and we're gonna select number seven this time. Default is six. Next, we're going to keep on hitting mode to go to PID. By default, it's set on one. You can leave it on one, but we're going to go ahead and change it to two. And the advantage of setting it to two is this way, when we look in HP Tuner software, it's going to say number one for our bank one and number two for our bank two. So it's a little bit easier for us to tell the difference between the two displays. At this point, both gauges are now set up to be data log within HP Tuners. And next, we'll show you how to set it up in the software. Want to see how we configured both gauges? Click the link. Let's get our gauge programmed and head over to the dyno. Oh, 
Fire's running a little rich. Hey, Bill, when we're all done, let's put it back on the dyno and make some power. For more information, visit aemelectronics.com.